go retails and salutations all you lovely individuals we are back it's league unlocked my name is Amelia flying han solo as we get to the big boys of the msi 2024 tournament winners final the two top seeds from the two best regions on the planet gen g versus blg knight versus chovy a matchup people have been waiting for no joke, five years. They've never played a best of five. They met up at Worlds, I think, back in 2020 when they were on Top Esports and DRX, respectively. But this is the first best of five that we've gotten between two players that have been continually consensus top three mid laners in the world for the last couple of years. So obviously an absolutely massive marquee matchup. Also, all of the LPL's hometown hopes and dreams are on BLG now that Top Esports has been eliminated. We knew that this one was going to deliver on the day, and absolutely it did from the very get-go. In this first game, we've been asking for the bot lane of Gen G to be the ones to step up, and they kind of survive a dive early in this first game as Keen pops in for a nifty little double kill on the Twisted Fate. Chovy gets the iconic Oriana in the mid lane, but it's not him having the impact. It's the combo of both Jun and On on this Sejuani Ash Freljord duo. There was so much CC, obviously, between those two that they continually found, mostly on Chovy, uh, on that Oriana to get him picked off and then bin on one of his strongest champions we knew camille was going to be coming back into the meta he had some absolutely nasty flanks multiple times throughout this whoever he was spamming the hextech ultimatum on had absolutely no chance no business even being on the rift as soon as he highlighted them didn't matter if it was pays canyon chovy keen whoever he targeted they were gonna die that was the story of this one was blg just completely flipping these team fights on their head the flanks from Bin, they eventually get a Chemtech Soul, and it, it took a little while, but BLG was pretty fully in control for the last 15-ish so minutes of this one before they uh, do end up closing it out and really just out team fighting Gen G across the board in that first game. The early game was decent for Gen G, you know, you thought maybe they'd be able to come away with it, but was it? meant to be and game two is where the pick ban uh, really heats up because yeah there, there was some mid lane attention no question in that first game and we get even more of it all five blg bands going towards the mid lane throw in the talia and ari band that's seven mid lane bands and then very quickly blg also picking up the oriana so basically eight mid laners take it out of the pool which means we get the hyped up the classic yone mid for chovy but they need an ap jungler alongside that so lock in the nidalee for canyon we've already seen him take over games again all the action in the bot lane pays with the clean cleanse to get out and he's going to survive and the cavalry is there to have his back la hands on that i ain't no support nautilus i'm getting the cs canyon shows up three zero in favor of Genji on that bot lane dive and Canyon was giving attention down there early and often. Bin is going backwards. You're going the wrong way, my man. You're going into the opposing base as Canyon hops in. He's going to eventually grab a second kill here and there was no inting early on from this cougar in the jungle as he picks off multiple kills and just got so unbelievably fed that his spears were doing ludicrous amounts of damage as they get another pick uh, on the mid lane. Mr. Knight unable to do anything on the Oriana as Chovy hops over and we don't need to flip the Baron. We just need to grab a few more picks. Bin does get the shutdown onto Lahans, but guess what? He still is the support despite being incredibly tanky. Baron then going over to Gen G. Some more nice engages out of Lahans on the Nautilus. We've been calling for this bot lane on Gen G to step up in this second game. They absolutely do. Of course, with a little bit, just, just a teeny tiny little bit of a helping hand uh, out of Canyon on that early game Nidalee action, but Gen G bounce back in a big way. A sub 30 minute win, deathless game 
for Canyon on that Nidalee and Pays rocking a near 100% KP percentage. Uh, 16 out of 18 kills he contributed to on that Senna, which, you know, we're accustomed to seeing that pick. Spam farm assists because it's pretty damn easy when you slap a heel on somebody and they take over. But we got ourselves a series one to one. We slide in to third game action and Chovy gets the way this time. Not everything is banned. A second Nidalee game for Canyon and a second straight game where he's showing a whole lot of love to the bot lane. This time the Senna is going on to BLG side. The Callista paired with the Nautilus for the hands. And oh look, another gank from Canyon on Nidalee. Another 3v2 scenario. The Abyssal Dive does not get on away. Another kill and this is just absolutely brutal. Completely with the hook. It doesn't matter because Canyon... The amount of damage a Fed Nidalee does to an underleveled Senna is not really fair looking or balanced. Even though On is so much tankier, it doesn't matter. Gen G whiffs the turret juggling a little bit, but that doesn't matter either because eventually On runs away and now he's not near the turret and he's flashing in place. Gotta be a little bit of tilt. Six to one now, a 3k gold lead for Gen G, almost entirely snowballing that out of the bottom lane, but. Chovy did get pretty damn fed on the way as well, uh, but we know that Bin is a bit of a menace on Cassante as he gets the shutdown onto Canyon. He finally goes down. Here's the angle for BLG to get back in the game as Knight's Tristana also going to pick up another kill, and then we ensue a little bit of a barren fiasco as BLG is going to secure the big purple worm that Diana does it for Jun. The problem is it's already a double kill for Chovy and the rest of the squad. This is a 4v5, by the way. Uh, Keen not there at all for this fight as they're gonna chase them down. Only Bin survives. Four out of five BLG members lose that buff and not getting much of a Baron power play. Minus 250 gold at this point. And then Gen G, well, they got the heavier wallets forcing yet another team fight. Three dragons to their name and the damage out of Chovy's way. Just the, the poke and zone control that both a Nidalee and a Huey put on the rift. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Huey kind of a bit, little bit like Cool Whip. Huey uh, popping off for Chovy. Look at all that damage between him and Canyon. Nearly 8k as it's just another extended chase down. As soon as the health bars get low for BLG, this comp is so damn good at chasing down low health members and eventually cleaning them up as all of a sudden after that rough, not not really rough, but dominant first game out of BLG, uh, Genji completely turning things around. 0 and 12 combined for the bot lane out of BLG on that one. 10, 0, and 7. 2, 0, and 16 for the two Genji guys. Huge step up from them. Again, I know Canyon giving them a whole lot of attention and help early on, but they absolutely piloted that early game lead to pretty much near perfection. Uh, game four now, it's match point for the boys from Gen G and elimination. Next round on the line, Chovy's going, give me that Corky in the mid lane. It's not in Italy, it's not even banned. It's a tanky board, Mr. Maokai for Canyon and this fight, BLG already down 2k. 3k, they have absolutely no business winning this fight. Keen's getting gold cards over the wall, but it's Bins Cassante, a 1v4. And not only does he kill Pays' Lucian to get the shutdown, but now he's zoning away both Lahens and Chovy. This guy straight up goes in a 1v4, gets a kill, and is scaring other people. He eventually is going to chase down Lahens as well before Chovy finally kills him. That's just Cassante things. Keen gets caught out on the side, but look at how low health everybody on BLG is. Four sub 30% health. That's a tank. Maokai, who can't really do anything, but they can't really kill him either. By the way, didn't even touch on Vex for Knight in this game at almost zero impact. He was three levels behind Chovy most of this game, who meanwhile is still getting soloed out by Ben, who was absolutely trying to carry the entire planet on this Cassante, and it was working pretty well for him. Even here, 2v3, you're terrified of the Cassante, but the gold card comes in. They do eventually, finally kill him. They would close out to chase down Elk as well, but check out Chovy's little Valkyrie there. Jun had so many sus 
Vi ulties that he has no business trying. Knight goes in and blows out the, the hens, but great, that's that's the Nami, and then he gets completely popped, but it's still a 3v3. Obviously, Gen G gets scared off the Baron, and they're thirsty for a little bit more, but Chovy's gonna be able to turn it around and almost kill the Renata class, but he does go down, so BLG not going down without a fight now. This, honestly, it, it could be a replay of a rough engage from Jun, but it is, believe it or not, a completely different fight. And this time, Chovy's flashing forward, blowing up Knight uh, before he can really do anything. And that was the moral of the story for this game and the Vex as you get the flash out. Okay, we've got Elk, Renata, Bin still alive, and anytime Bin is still alive, you're terrified. But look at the poke damage from Chovy, 7K damage in this fight just a complete and absolute menace as finally they're gonna hop over bin is left running away to the hillside belk or elk comes out of the ga and immediately gets popped that's chemtech soul over to genji they've got the baron buff they've got a disgusting tidal wave out of the hands and it is just clean up duty from there you can tell how thirsty they are to close this out on gets thrown back in just to scare them away as canyon drops but pays mr confident on the lucian a hundred to zeros elk on that Callista to take him down. And that is it from there. Look at that. It looks just like another day at the office for Chovy. This is to book a spot in his first ever international finals. It guarantees the LCK that coveted fourth seed at this year's world championship. They will await the winner of the loser's bracket run. But what an absolute mid lane dippy in that fourth game, especially really all the games that Gen.G were able to win in this set. But I mean, I was excited when you saw the Vex get locked in for a night, uh, but he ends up doing half the damage that both Pays and Chovy do. He did less, barely more damage than the Cassante in this one. And I know Cassante was absolutely insane, busted in a 40 minute game there, but whew, for the hyped up matchup of this mid lane throwdown, it is very rare that you see a mid laner three levels ahead of their opposition. That's what we got out of Chovy. He ends up picking up a well-deserved series MVP because outside of that first game where he got caught out a few times, he absolutely was gapping that mid lane matchup against Knight. And it, it really feels like it's that Chovy era that we are fully entering as now Genji sits pretty as the final bosses for this year's mid-season Invitational. And truly, the Autumn Tiger Gen G works so perfectly because, of course, they're the Tigers of the LCK. It feels like it doesn't matter which of the three teams remaining is going to match up against them in the finals. They should be the big favorites because, I mean, number one, coming into this event, we talked about this might be the best form that Chovy has ever been in. And I absolutely think, think that's the case. But now you start making the comparisons uh, from this year's Gen G roster as to what they had last year. Obviously, the biggest thing to look at is the added angle of these picks that Canyon can bring in. We've already seen the Nidalee. I feel like we're going to see something else in finals, but that added early game pressure that he can put on pretty much any lane and the draft variability. When you've got five full five mid lane bands going the way of Chovy, Canyon can show that he will be fully unlocked with a pocket pick that can completely take over a game. So Ch Canyon's carry potential, completely different from God bless Peanut, what he was given in 2023. And Mr. Keen does basically the same thing where he can have these carry champions. He didn't really have to do it today. Had a Cassante, some TF games. Uh, but despite how lethal Bin was in a lot of these team fights, Keen was still more than holding his own. Uh, against them and because they just beat BLG head to head I don't care if it's T1, G2, BLG I don't care if these three teams put their rosters together to make the ultimate super team I'm liking Gen G as favorites it just feels like they're getting over some mental hurdles avoiding the reverse sweep from TES winning that game five in the fashion they did really felt like they broke down some mental barriers in terms of international competition because it's not LCK teams 
they're beating. We always meme about domestic LC or domestic Gen G versus international Gen G. Well, now that's both LPL teams at this tournament doing what they could not do at last year's MSI, taking them down. Not even, I guess they needed five games against top esports. So scratch that comment. Not even needing five games against BLG to get it done. But it really feels like this is just the year of Gen G. The last domino we were waiting to fall was this bot lane stepping up. And this series, case in point, Elk and On have looked unbeatable, unmatched in the bot lane. And pretty much all of their other 2v2 throwdowns uh, at this event so far. And again, I know Canyon was hanging out, giving a whole lot of attention, but Lahan's skill shots were on point, both the Nautilus and the Nami, in lane, outside of lane, and Pays, it looked like this series really got his confidence back because he got to actually be the featured guy, be spoon-fed some kills, and have the opportunity to take over some of these team fights. Number one, because Chovy is such an impactful player, such a threat in all of these team fights. He garners so much attention from the opposing team, which really opens up opportunities for Pays to be able to find some spacing in these team fights, to be aggressive, whether it was on the Lucian, whether it was on the Callista, whether it's on a, an 100 plus soul Senna. He had a fantastic series, probably the best games two to four, the best three game stretch he's had since early in the spring split over in the LCK. So if the bot lane has leveled up to the level that we got against BLG, I don't see how any of these three teams are going to be able to take down Gen G at this year's MSI final. It's been too long. It feels like this is the perfect time. Chobi deserves that international title to his name. And how about Showmaker probably watching what Canyon's doing at this event and going, too bad I couldn't catch on uh, and head over to Gen G. That damn Chobi guy. They probably wanted him over me, but I'm sure he's seeing what Canyon's doing at this event and really missing having that superstar jungler along his side because Canyon to me is the main reason why Gen G are favorites for this tournament and why they have ascended to new heights here in 2024. Playing for the right to not even get to Gen G, to get to BLG before they can get. To Gen G. G2 versus T1 next on the schedule at MSI. And I know Mark and I touched on this very briefly, this matchup, but let's dive a little bit deeper. He said G2 should be favorites in this matchup. That's still a little bit of a hot take, I think. Uh, I think this is close to a toss up, much closer than the last time we matched up, uh, or the first time they matched up at this MSI. When you're looking at key matchups, I feel like because Yike has leveled up, I feel good about him versus Owner. Caps has had, I think he's slotted right behind Chovy in terms of best mid laners at this event. So I'm I'm feeling good about Caps in the Faker matchup, especially what he was doing in that matchup the last time uh, they matched up. I know Chovy had some clutch gear, or Faker had some clutch game four and five performances against T1. But the pivotal matchups for me are the two side lanes. Start and top side, broken Blade versus Zeus. Obviously, Cassante is the flavor of the month, year, decade to talk about. And Broken Blade's only played it once. We got six Cassante games for Zeus. We'll see if it's banned. We know it's going to be prominent in this series. But it's the non-Cassante picks that I'm looking at. Because we know Zeus loves to play Vayne. BB has played a Vayne game. Really, the one champion that they don't share has been the Yasuo. We got two Yasuo games out of Broken Blade, and my man looked absolutely clean on it. He's got some of the best top lane stats at this MSI event. Zeus has been good, but nowhere near that world-ending, world-beating best top laner in the world. So if Broken Blade can either play weak side like he was against top esports to the level that he did and just go even, not fall too behind, I'm feeling very good about this matchup. Or if he can actually get some resources, actually have Yike give him some attention early, I think Broken Blade can carry some games, whether it's on a Camille, maybe a Vayne pick himself, or maybe some pocket pick we haven't seen yet. This dude, it's always top lane. We're talking about the West being behind the LCK and the LPL teams. Well, I truly think Broken Blade I feel like a broken record. We've seen this a couple times. This is an opportunity for him to show that he can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and I actually like BB in this Zeus matchup 